of the interesting problems that uh, some fishermen have with their boat is they can't get their engine to idle down slow enough. Now, one way of fixing this is um, a lot of the Yamaha four-strokes actually have the ability to control the idle speed or the trolling speed uh, through their digital gauge system. So, one of the things you might say is, well, I bought a boat and I didn't have a command link installed, so you know maybe I can't use these gauges. The reality is, is anyone with a Yamaha engine and an NMEA network in their boat can upgrade to these gauges uh, using our cabling kit, and uh, then you not only get the benefit of all the other good stuff that these gauges do but you can also control your idle speed or your trolling speed in 50 rpm increments so uh, we'll show you that on another episode as to exactly how that works but the installation is what we're going to cover off today so first thing you need to know is there's more than one type of digital gauge just because they're not an analog gauge and they say Yamaha on them doesn't mean they're necessarily the type of gauge you want there's two ways to identify the digital gauges. Uh, you'll see that there's sort of the command link four pin connection on the tack and the speed and fuel gauge has got both the six and the four pin. But if you've got a tachometer or speed or fuel gauge that's got a whole bunch of cabling coming out of it, that's not the right uh, setup. It's basically either analog or a predecessor. The other thing is, is in the part number, there's the 6Y8 part uh, prefix. Uh, that's certainly an indication that this is the type of gauge you're getting and not one that's uh, one of the old hardwired wire into everything kind of thing. Now on the uh, speed speedo, we don't uh, need the six pin connection. So what we've done is we've uh, put a blanking plug in here. And all that does is it keeps the connections nice and dry. You don't need to worry about that with the tachometer because they use the same plastic, but there's nothing there, so don't need to worry about that. And either in either case, if you get the speedometer or the tachometer, we've got um, cabling kits for either one. So let's head out to the boat and uh, take a look at what we've got in front of us for a job. Here's what we're starting with. Factory speedo, factory tack. Underneath, You'll notice there's a lot of connections and probably the easiest way to deal with those is just to put heat shrink over top of them. The other thing you may want to do is you may want to label them in terms of what they do. So actually taking a video or a photograph is always a good idea when you're not sure if you're going to be putting connections back because then you've got a reference. So I'm just going to start with the speedo because there's actually less stuff attached and uh, once we get that out it'll pretty much tell us what we need to do on the tachometer just with more connections. It was relatively painless to get the speedometer off. So all that you've got back there is you've got um, the uh, little basket that holds it in. You've got these two connections back here, which they're essentially there to give you light on the speedometer at night. So you can get that off, get that off. And there's um, the vacuum line that's going there. And let me just see if I can and it's just held in place with a cable tie. Yeah. Sound of success. Okay. So basically that's what the back of this looks like. Um, and let's see if I can pull this through. There is a little basket that sort of distanced the speedometer in terms of the way it mounted on the cowl. So this just sat in there like that. So if you initially look at the back, you see this thing sticking out and you kind of go, how's the Yamaha gonna work on that? And the reality is, is uh, this comes out. So like I said, the speedometer is always a good place to start because there's very few connections. Okay, here's an important uh, step in this whole thing, is if you think about the back of the tack, you might have multiple wires running to each post. So what they're basically doing is they're using the posts on the tachometer as kind of like a little junction box for those wires. So before you start installing anything more, the one thing that you should do, turn on your accessories and turn on your ignition 
just to the run point and make sure that all your gauges and everything start to wake up. And this is another reason why it's very important to have photographs of the connections before you make a bunch of changes. So what mine was was yellow and purple had to go together and black and blue. And what that was doing was essentially extending power to the rest of the gauge set. So, very important point. Before you start putting in the gauges, you have to make sure that you haven't disturbed the connections that are going to the gauges that are left behind. What I mean by that is that any place that, either on the speedometer or the tachometer that you remove, where you see two connections on a post, you have to make sure that those connections continue to exist. And that can either, either be done by soldering or crimps or whatever. But in order to test that, what I've done here is I've put some small little alligator clips on the two sets of wires where they were going to the same post. And the thing that I've got to check is that when I fire up uh, the engine to just the uh, run position, that all my gauges wake up. You can see that they're starting to jump to life there. And the other thing is, is that when you turn your nav lights on, that your gauges are eliminated. And as long as that's working properly, then you're good to go. So one of the things that I always like to do is I always like to um, try and conserve, you know, the existing wiring as much as possible. But this right here, if you look closely, is one of the reasons why I don't like uh, cheap crimp tools. Because that almost missed. And uh, long term that's going to create problems. So what we're using here, just so that uh, everybody can see it, is... Uh, we have what's called a heat shrink butt connector and I don't know if you can see that but there's basically a hole at both ends the material that's over top is a heat shrink material uh, this is made for 14 to 16 gauge wire and uh, that should be good for what we're doing here um, the other thing is we're using a pretty serious crimp tool uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the cheap ones. Um, we also sell tools on our website, just to put in a plug for uh, these guys. Um, German made stuff. So we're going to try doing the splice from the front. It gives us a lot more room to work. Um, these are actually some pretty crappy crimps that are back here, so I'm not worried about leaving them behind. Oh, here comes yellow. And because of my little test using my alligator leads, I know that yellow and purple have to uh, connect up together. I've put the heat shrinked butt connectors in there. And now we've got a couple of connections that we just need to cover up so that they don't short out against something uh, now that we're no longer using them. So this is actually from the tack itself. And what we're going to use for that are these little uh, heat shrink um, chunks. And uh, so for this, we actually use uh, a heat gun. Now you can go and you can get yourself some really expensive heat guns. This is just a Black & Decker uh, paint stripping gun. You can get these at most hardware stores. They work just fine. Uh, but the one thing to keep in mind when you're using these things is they do heat things up, so if you like melting stuff, they're also good for that, and that's your one and only warning in this video. Um, so let's go in here, uh, take some of these connections, and just put some of the heat shrink over top. And you want to cover uh, as much of the connection as is practical. Leave yourself about a quarter of an inch or so uh, for uh, till the end. So in other words, that. That metal part shouldn't stick out, obviously, past the end. It should cover up all of the section that is going to be possibly exposed to something else. And trying to hold this stuff while the air gets warm is always a bit of a challenge. Obviously better to melt the heat shrink than to your boat, so now I'll just show you this real quickly because you don't have to get retentive about shrinking this all the way down. You just need it so it doesn't move. So that's important if you can have a look at that. 
just see the shape of it. So it's not going to go in either direction, so you're fine. That's all you need. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also shrink those butt connections that I did. So they have uh, a heat shrink around the connection itself. And all you have to do is shrink those down a little bit so that they're watertight. Uh, less, less of a problem when you're in a sort of a dashboard environment like this. Obviously, if you're back in, you know, the motor compartment or something like that, you want to be a little more tight and you want to make sure that the glue runs and seals up the wire properly. I'll do another video on that. We're ready for uh, actually putting the tack and the speedo into place. All of the wiring that's here is either been reconnected to where it's supposed to go or it's got heat shrink over top of it so that nothing shorts out. And now all we have to do is put the speedometer and the uh, 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 tack in. So if you're putting the speedometer in, uh, it's a good idea uh, before you um, actually mount it to put this blanking plug on. And you'll just feel it click into place and that just keeps the moisture out of it. Uh, the cable's a different thing because you've got this in the way. So here, what we do, slide it into the hole, and that should all be pretty obvious. And then you've got to go behind there and uh, put this ring on, tighten everything up until it doesn't move around. On the back of your fuel slash speedometer, you've got a six pin connection that has to be hooked up. And this is the only one that's actually got some analog inputs. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if you want to use the fuel display on the gauges, uh, this cable is required and what it does is it hooks in two uh, analog fuel sending units into the meter and these are just voltages so there's uh, nothing digital about these connections at all. Uh, if you don't need them or if you've got an existing fuel gauge that's on your boat already and you're happy using that then you don't need to worry about these at all. Uh, the colors on these are pink and black. This one is an important one. This is uh, the blue and white connections that come out of the uh, six pin connection on the speedometer. So the, the weird part about this, I guess, is that although the gauges themselves uh, usually take their data from the NMEA connection that we've wired in, this connection, which is the white and the blue, is actually the old-fashioned NMEA uh, 0183 uh, connection. And the reason that that's there is because most GPS's, although there are some that don't, uh, send their data out over that uh, type of a connection. So NMEA is, is kind of positive and negative and um, there's some other documentation that we have on our website that will talk a bit about, you know, in which instance you need to hook which wire on your device to the blue and which has to go to the white. Uh, Lawrence has one set of sort of colors coming out of its fish finders and Garmin has uh, their own. Uh, there's also the ability of hooking up third-party GPS units that aren't fish finders using this connection. So there's going to be a little bit of homework that's required there. The speedometer can either be from an NMEA 0183 source or the speedometer can also be just a regular uh, sort of Yamaha speedometer that's kind of a passive pickup that's a separate device. Uh, but there's no way with these gauges to hook up your existing sort of vacuum line to indicate speed. So you've got to make one of those two decisions and that's actually one of the things you should do for homework before you go out and buy these gauges is decide where you're going to get your speed signal from because otherwise you're not going to have a speedometer unless you already got one in your boat. For our tack, remember that we don't need a blanking plug because there's nothing in that connection and uh, once we get this seated in the dash and we've basically spun on this ring and uh, tightened the tack down to the dash, then we're good. The other thing about this ring that you'll notice is there's two ways you can put this on, depending on how much space you need, like how thick your dashboard is. So just another note for you. So once I install this in the dash, tighten everything up, the only thing that's left to do is put the uh, uh, command link to NMEA cable in and we should be ready to test her out.
once everything's hooked up, just put your ignition key to uh, the run position and make sure you turn on your accessories because that's probably where you've got your NMEA network wired up to for power. And you'll see that the first thing that you'll notice is on the tack, you'll get the hours. Uh, that's pretty standard. You'll see miles per hour and just general information here. We'll show you what it looks like when we start the engine. So I left, left this uh, further down than I will when I uh, cable tie everything up. But uh, as you can see, the end of our backbone has just got the two T's, one of which is the end of each of the cables going to the speedometer and tachometer. And you move the terminator to the very end again and tighten everything up and make sure that it's out of the way for when you're out there in the water. And that's about it. Let's test it. The last thing to do, get underneath with some zip ties or cable ties, whatever you call these, and uh, never put the cables so snug that they can't have a little bit of movement. Uh, but other than that, you're good to go. A couple of final notes on our Yamaha gauge install. One of the things that you're going to notice when you go out on the water is the backlighting on these gauges works slightly differently than it does on the rest of your instrument cluster. In order to set the backlight intensity, you have to do that through the menus on the gauges themselves. And it's a good idea to download the manual off the Yamaha website so that you can adjust some of the other things, like the clock, uh, the types of units that you're measuring, whether it be liters or kilometers or miles or gallons. And uh, the other thing is, is that uh, we'll be showing you how to set the engine RPM for trolling in a subsequent video. So make sure that you either listen to that video right after this one or you can find that one on our Golden Channels uh, YouTube channel uh, and also on our website goldenchannels.com.